Committee for Wednesday, June 7th at 6.08 p.m. to order. Uh, the committee, the Ordinance Committee is made up of Councillor Fowell, Councillor Rodriguez, Councillor Minicello, and Councillor Lally. Uh, and I do recognize the quorum as Councillor Fowell, myself, and Councillor Rodriguez are present. Madam Clerk, item number one. Ordinance, an ordinance amending and establishing a Department of Health and Human Services for the purposes of providing comprehensive health and human services to the residents of the city. Invited to attend, Winthrop Farwell, Jr., Counselor at Large, Kelly Young, Director of Veteran Services, Megan Bridges, City Solicitor or her designee, Janice Fitzgerald, Director of Council on Aging. Thank you. Um, Director uh, Janice Fitzgerald, was put on here as just a courtesy. She did have a previous engagement, and um, so she, she's not going to be here this evening. Uh, but we do have Ms. Uh, Kelly Young here, and um, we did hear about on this ordinance last month, but there are some amendments that we would like to make some um, some changes. Did you want to speak on this, Councilor Fowler, no, or I we'll just I have Ms. Young? I believe that because it was a, what's called a floor amendment when we met the last time, we didn't invite any guests because we didn't anticipate that amendment. So uh, now this is an opportunity to have our veteran services officer address the amendment, which uh, perhaps we should have. Uh, perhaps we should have the, the uh, clerk read clerk the amendment. Read the amendment just for, for that in advance. Sure, Madam Clerk. I'm going to need a minute because that was not. It was a section six, right? I don't have it right now, but okay. so can. Well, just in summary, uh, the original ordinance that I filed uh, placed under the new, newly proposed Department of Health and Human Services, the Commission on Diversity or any commission of similar name, uh, the Commission on Women's Issues. Uh, and obviously the Board of Health would now be encompassed. And then the floor amendment, I believe, added the Veterans Department, the Veterans Council, and the Council on Aging, uh, if my memory is correct. And so that's why, that's where we are now, so that the Veterans Services Officer could respond to the amendment, which she would have not known was coming. <clears throat> yeah, I, through the Chief. Uh, Councilor Rodriguez. Um, it actually, it added the health department, the COA, Ve Veteran Affairs, Human Services, uh, and the veteran, the veteran Affairs or ver Veteran Services would actually have the Veterans Council under it. Yeah. Yeah, we basically went back to the original um, diagram that we had when we first uh, discussed uh, adding this particular uh, department or basically coordinating this uh, entire system under one. So that's what these, those departments were when we first discussed it. You wanna see this? Sure, no, I have it, but so, um Do 
you want to take a brief recess? I have or? it now. Oh, available. you do have it? Okay. Um, so the motion to amend included the departments and commissions that were previously listed in Section 6 to include the Human Rights Division, Public Health Division, Veteran Service Division, Youth Council, Advisory Council on Health, Veterans Council, Homelessness Commission, and Council on Aging. And then to add an effective date of July 1, 2023. Perfect. So we do have our veteran services director here that would like to actually speak on the amendment and why I believe you feel you shouldn't fall into this ordinance. So if you'd like to um, address us. Thank you for inviting me, counselors. I appreciate the opportunity to advocate for the veterans. Um, it's my recommendation that veteran services and the veterans council stay the way it is and not fall under Health and Human Services, even though I, I do think a Department of Health and Human Services would be a, a great advancement for the city. Um, and if you asked me a couple years ago, or a few years ago, I guess now, I probably wouldn't have had a strong feeling, but during the pandemic, uh, it accelerated, or it was a catalyst for the issues that veterans face. And we saw it mainly with the soldiers' homes. I think that was because of the, the fatalities. It really put, shined a, or a spotlight was shined on the, on the issues. And so one of the first things Governor Healy did when she took office was she removed at the state level the Department of Veteran Services from the Executive Office of Health and Human Services and elevated it to its own executive office because, as I said, the pandemic just showed that it, it wasn't the place for veteran services uh, and that the advocate for veterans, so it's a secretary now, really needs direct access to a, an elected official uh, and that that oversight should be by an elected official. Uh, and there was a report that came out, again, it was mainly about the soldiers' homes and I understand that Brockton doesn't have you know, responsibilities like healthcare facilities under veteran services, but to scale uh, similar bad things could happen, uh, at, like at our level. Uh, but one of the things in the report was no one knew who to report to, and when they, even when they reported things the right way, it was overlooked because, hey, it's a pandemic, everyone is facing these things, and no one really took a pause to look at veterans and what was unique about that community uh, and, and try to troubleshoot problems that were specific to veterans. Even though everybody faced the pandemic, uh, it hit veterans a lot a lot harder. Um, so that's, that's one reason. Another is that a lot of what we do in veteran services is confidential. And we, we don't talk about it. Maybe we could talk about it sort of in aggregate. Um, but the disability claims are our bread and butter. Uh, that's separate from the chapter 115. That's the cash assistance for low-income vets or spouses or dependents. Uh, but the disability claims really change people's quality of lives. It, 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 helps, it helps them get more health care. Uh, and it puts money in their pocket because they're not able to work and interact in the community as they normally would. And so we don't talk about a lot of that because it's really confidential. And the fewer people that need to know uh, about challenges we face with, with any claims or cases or what people are going through, um, it's, it's really not anyone's business other than the vet, the folks in my office that they appoint at as their representative, and then anyone that we recommend as their representative to become involved to push things along. Um, and then I think we're also unique in veteran services because we're a mandated position. I don't think there are many of those, and Massachusetts is like a front runner in taking care of veterans. We're the only state that has veteran service officers mandated as a position in the municipality, and for small communities, they become a district, but there is a VSO representing all communities in Massachusetts. And so most of our programs are top of the line throughout the whole country. The state gives it way more benefits than any other, um, than any other state. And so what the state researches and determines to be a best practice, I think as a municipality, we should follow it because so far they've, you know, they've had some hiccups, but they've been on the money with the way they've, they've uh, organized things and, and arranged things and advocated for veterans. Um, 
And so most of the things that we do in veteran services are state and federal like mandates and laws and programs. There are very few things at the municipal level that that impa impact our day-to-day -day work. Of course, you know, we work for the residents of Brockton. We do a lot of things that are very specific to Brockton. Um, our local ordinances certainly are specific to the city, but they usually come from a state or a federal like a, uh, option that we can adopt. Um, and again, because of that, that I deal, that the department deals with like legislation, we need access to the city council and the fewer layers between the advocate for the veterans and the people who can solve their problems, the better. That's just been determined to be a best practice. Um, and I wanna make sure you know about all the partnerships we've been developing. Um, so we're veteran services, but we can't solve all the problems alone. So we're, for example, we're working with dist the district attorney's office. We co-sponsored a grant to get more resources for mental health, not just for veterans, but for their families, their children, um, and that would extend you know, to whoever, or caretakers, which is huge because most services are for veterans and their immediate families. Not all of them um, cover, like maybe your aunt's taking care of you or helping you out or a cousin or, you know, we have some folks that their neighbors bring in their paperwork for their benefits because they just don't have anybody. Um, and, and we find that a lot. So including caretakers was a, was a priority for me and that was, was a reason I was really excited as a partner with the district attorney's office on this. Hopefully we get the grant, we won't know for a while. Um, and then homelessness is tough because it's usually not just homelessness, it's usually mental health, substance abuse, um, other like barriers to education and employment. So we've developed partnerships to start looking at ideas to co-write grants and co-sponsor programs. Um, but what we are working on that I'm, again, really excited about because it will help keep people in their current homes before, bef before they're ever facing homelessness um, are rental and mortgage assistance because for most benefits, the income cap is too low. Right, if it's thirty thousand dollars, which is like two hundred, roughly two hundred percent of the federal poverty level, not a lot of people with a thirty thousand dollar, you know, annual income, own a home. So we're looking at uh, programs and grants that will be more inclusive to folks that make a little bit more money, but it's still really tough to live out there. Um, you know, and of course, throughout the city, there are a lot of. There are a lot of resources already available, but vets don't necessarily have access. So, you know, again, we're working with the Council on Aging to try to get that, the bat bus that they have um, to m move vets from where they are to the services that they need. And I don't necessarily have to be in control of those things, but I certainly think that the and when I say I, I don't mean me, right? It's, it, it's whoever is in this position, whether it's me or somebody else, it's hard for me not to talk in the first person though. So if I've been saying I, I don't mean me, it's, it's whoever's in this position um, or in the department, period. So the department doesn't necessarily have to be in control, although we do like to be leaders, um, but we, whatever our role in the partnership is, we should be, the advocate, the person with the, the say on what the priorities are, what we're focusing on. Because like I said, a lot of the stuff that we do, no one really sees and it's, it's really in the weeds. Um, and again, that's why there's a VSO mandated in Massachusetts because it's tough to be a subject matter expert if that's not your sole focus. Um, do you have any questions for me? Thank you, Madam Director. Councilors, any questions for? Uh, not a question, but <clears throat> I uh, had an opportunity to talk with the director uh, for a pretty good time and actually learned a lot more about Veterans Affairs, Veterans Services than I, than I knew before. 
I did explain to her, and I wasn't speaking for Councillor Rodriguez, but I did explain to her that the thrust of the amendment was to reduce the, the mayor's span of control so that he didn't have so many people reporting to him. And I used a couple of analogies. Uh, you know, the colonel of state police that runs a vast organization with a myriad of responsibilities reports to the secretary of public safety. So that person, he or she does not report directly to the governor. Um, I didn't report directly to the governor when I was commissioner of public safety. There are, there are a number of positions where you report to a secretary. In this case, it would be a commissioner. <clears throat> but the other thing that I'd like to remind my colleagues is that, uh, and I'm not known for my delicate language, but um, the health department, its responsibilities, its functions, its efficiency, its expenditures, to me, that right now has to be our priority. And so I would be very comfortable if we were to offer an amendment here and allow Veterans Services to stand on its own, let a year or two go by, and, and it's written into the ordinance that the mayor can recommend putting more departments or agencies under the Department of Health and Human Services if he or she feels so inclined. But I, I guess what I'm saying is rather than have a big umbrella right now to start off, I'd like to really drill down on the health department. I think that's going to have a lot of benefits for our residents. Um, I think a lot of work needs to be done. We have the new inspectional services department, which combines building and health department. So um, I, I would be very comfortable and I would support an amendment to go back to leaving uh, the veterans agency, veteran service officer and veterans affairs standing on its own pending further review. I mean, we can always come back and do something different, but, but I, I want to focus on health. That's, that's where I'm coming from. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor. <coughs> any other councilors have any questions or comments? Councilman Acello. So you think that the autonomy and, and the direct line to, you know, the, the elected officials is, is necessary for, to be effective in, in, in the role that um, you currently hold and, and, the, and the veterans will be will benefit from that independence and sort of less less uh, minim, minimizing the layers so to speak between the individual and in in your position you currently obviously um, and and the way the structure is currently in place I do, that's a, a pretty good summary of, of what I said. Um, and I know the concern is taking some of the the, the crunch in the mayor's schedule and, and what he's responsible for away, but we take very little of the, the mayor's time in veteran services. And when we do, it's something the mayor needs to know about. It's not frivolous, it's not you know a meeting about something that could have been an email. It's usually, um, if I'm going to the mayor, it's usually, Hey, we're borderline crisis, and we need we need some push. We need we need to. It's already streamlined. We need it even more streamlined. I, I can see the logic in what you're saying, and, and I certainly can. And I and I, I tend to agree with um, my learned counsel, who um, counselor who has been here for quite some time, and um, I, I think I agree with his um, his uh, view of this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Council Rodriguez. Thank you, ma'am. Um, well, Kelly, you and I talked about a little about. This is mine, right? Yes, yours. Okay. Uh, about this the other day, and asked someone that actually served um, in the uh, in the armed forces. In the sense, uh, veterans are also dear to my heart, and that is actually the reason why this thing was proposed from the get-go, because um, the. And I'm not, this is not pointing the finger at you or anybody else, but basically saying the veteran of services in the city of Brockton <clears throat> has been an organization or a department that basically provides benefits to uh, veterans and conducts two parades, one in the uh, Memorial Day and another one in November for the Veterans Day. And some of us are looking to do a little bit more than that because one of the other things that I do, I run a social service agency and I see some of the trouble and the issues that people are going through 
that is not just about collecting a paycheck for benefits. They've got a variety of other issues going on that they need real services. And most of the services that they need is in the health and human services side of things. Now, when this thing was proposed from the get-go was not to eliminate the departments at all. If anything, it was basically to give the department some coverage, some cover to go after when you just said something in terms of doing something with the Council on Aging. If you guys somehow belong to the same kind of div division like, it would be a lot easier to work within those uh, silos in the sense so that it's not, it's not what it, it's, it, it is nowadays because you've got the Council on Aging doing something for the seniors on its own but they could do something else on the other side that could actually come through another department somewhere to benefit the seniors but it's not because everybody looks at the silos. You know, you're the Council on Aging, you deal with the Council on Aging. Your veteran services, you deal with the veteran services. And it shouldn't be that way in a city. Um, I understand what the state is doing in terms of streamlining the, the, the lines, but I don't see how separating these, uh, how creating this commissioner's position. And I do tend to agree with Council Fowell is saying that perhaps because this is not in existence, that it might be something that we might take the load off until we kind of get it moving in the right direction, and then once it's moving, then we can readjust what we need to do. But I need you to understand that this thing here was never about uh, taking powers away from, I look at these department heads when it comes to their department heads. They just, uh, just like our CFO, basically oversee some of the functions of the auditor's office, uh, some of the functions of the treasurer's office, because it's all part of the finance division, in the sense. So that's how I looked at it. You know, I wasn't, you know, uh, the treasurer has a direct line to the, to the mayor when he or she needs to get to it. Uh, the same thing with the auditor, you know, so it doesn't take anything away as far as the direct c command or direct con uh, 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 reaching in the sense. And it's the same, the same thing is true with us here in the council because if there was a veteran issue, then we want to talk to not the commissioner of, but the department head who's the head of that particular department in the sense. So it's not taking away from anything. If anything, it's augmenting a lot of the work that's being done because then you would be able to um, collaborate more directly in the sense that it's not, well, I'm going to go ask the folks at Human Services if they want to do this because they're actually part of the same division that you're looking at. You know, I mean, us that actually served, um, we've got the Department of the Navy that oversees the Marine Corps. But there's a, a Joint Chief for the Marine Corps. And when the Joint Chiefs get together, there's four of them plus the chief, plus the chair, you know? So it's not taking anything away from just because it's under this particular umbrella, because we want to make sure that veteran issues are seen as a human services issues that it's not just the veteran sitting here, uh, oh yeah, go get your check, uh, show up to the parade, and you'll be fine. I want us, our city to look at veterans saying, you know what, we, you've got your own department, but we also want to look at you as humans living in our community that have health and human issues. You know, and that's the reason why this was proposed from the get-go, is to give it more cover, is to give it more of a hump so that you're not sitting on that little silo w with you and a couple of other people that you, you have in your office in the sense. Uh, it's actually grown somewhat because it was even smaller in the past. You know, and basically a forgotten group. And that's why once I got some sort of um, the ability to say something in this government, I proposed this because I thought it would actually bring more light into the veterans issues as well as the senior issues because they're sitting on their own as well, as well as the general you know, human services issues, because we don't really have that. That's not being coordinated either. You know, it's all over. You know, this department will do a little bit in this, that department will do a little bit in that, but it's not being coordinated as it should in a city of this size. Um, we all saw what COVID did to the city because we don't have a great coordination of, of things. You know, this group is doing this. Uh, the health department is doing this. The Board of Health is doing its own thing. And it can't continue to be that way. We have to look at it more of how can we make this better than it has been? You know, not that we're taking away from things, 
but we're putting more resources and more eyes and ears to help in that situation where you're not sitting or standing on, a, on an island by yourself because that's what has been happening in this city. I've been, I think I've been here 43 years and I, I can't tell you that it's been any different mm -hmm. because it's been that way. And I think it's time for us to kind of move forward and change some things. We're not taking away anything. If anything, we're putting something on top of to make it better. And that was the intent of this whole thing from the get-go. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? Councillor Fowler? Not, not a question, but <laughs> I don't disagree with anything my colleague has said, and I have great respect for, for uh, Councillor Rodriguez and Councillor Thompson is in the audience. They're, they're veterans. Uh, You know, a lot of our decision making, however sound it may be, has to reflect timing. And I'm, I'm going to repeat myself and say we, we've got to focus on the health issues. And so I would like to make a motion, subject to the wording from Legislative Council, that we backtrack a bit and leave the veterans issues on its own, which can always be revisited. We can always offer another amendment to the ordinance, but leave the veteran services out of it for now. Let us focus on health. I think we have a very proactive and very motivated veteran services director uh, based on my observations and discussions with her. So that would be my motion, but I would just ask a legislative council if she could tell me what the heck I should say to make sense out of this. It's just gonna be to um, strike uh, veteran services division and Veterans Council from Section 6. All right, then, then that would be my motion. Uh, and again, the reason for that is timing and, and where we need to place our priorities. <clears throat> Not a disagreement with anything that any of the councillors have said. Thank you, councillors. I also, uh, I mean, I agree with you all, but I have also spoken a number of times with uh, our Director of Veterans Services, and I feel as the Director and Department Head, we should really listen to her and see how she feels. I mean, that um, it's very important. She's dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, I like the idea that we can revisit this down the line and we, you know, nothing is set in stone. We'll see how it works on both ends. But um, so a motion's been made. I'll second it. Properly seconded. And, and as, as Councilor Farwell said, I, I'm very impressed with what my colleague, Councilor Rodriguez said. Um, absolutely respect his opinions. You know, he, he served, Councillor Thompson served. Um, I see where he's coming from. Um, but I, why don't we try to just ease into this one um, and we can always revisit it. Um, both both Councillor Farwell and Councillor Rodriguez make a lot of sense in what they say. But um, I, I, I think on this one issue, um, I, I tend to agree with Councillor Farwell for right for the moment, for the moment. Thank you, councillors. Okay, so the, we're voting on the amendment? Yes. All those in favor of the amendment? All those opposed? The amendment passes. And if it's the will of the council, there'd be a motion to recommend favorably. Back okay. to the full city We need council. a motion, councillors. Motion to? Recommend favorably. Recommend favorably. Second. Yes. Full council. Motion has been made and properly seconded to um, recommend this favorably back to the full city council. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries favorably back to the full city council. Anything else? There's nothing else before us this evening. This meeting, um, oh, I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion has been made and properly seconded to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning? We are adjourned. Amen. Thank you, councilors.